Good morning, class. Good morning. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. That's what we're made to be. It's what we're born to be. Not losers, winners, victorious ones. And the scripture says that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So... Uh, uh, turn everything else off, get your Bible, something to make a note with, come into the classroom with us. We saved you a, a seat here to, to come inside and receive. Let's release faith and believe the Lord to give us exactly what we need today. Lord, we ask you, all of us agreeing together and touching this, asking you for the anointing that teaches, that reveals, that quickens, that heals, that restores and delivers. Thank you, Lord, the anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens. We ask for the manifestation of this and we yield ourselves to you. Open our eyes, show us things we need to see, and we purpose to be not hearers only, but doers. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Open in uh, the Bible to Hebrews the 10th chapter, let's continue in our study that we've been on for weeks now called By Faith. In Hebrews 10, verse 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith. This is a quote from earlier scripture. Uh, one way of, uh, of it's written is to say the just shall live by his faith or her faith. Uh, but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Now we see just a few verses later in 11.6 that without faith, it's impossible to please him. And so this is a, just another way of saying that. Uh, instead of saying, if you don't have faith, it's saying, if you draw back, God won't be pleased. I believe we'll get into this some today, but... Um, the enemy is always trying to confuse and twist and distort. You know, wicked actually means twisted. And that's, that's what the enemy does all the time. He, he'll, he'll try to take a good thing, even something from the Word, and twist it into something that God never said or meant. And um, you see that with this, uh, that people have thought, well, you know... God wants me to be humble. He's pleased with me being humble. Well, that's true, but what people imagine that to be can be twisted. And in their mind, they think that means passive. That I just, I'm just, I just lay back, I just pull back and sit down and do nothing and leave it all up to God. But that is the opposite of what he said here. He said, that doesn't please me. That does not please me. Because really, that's the coward's way. And there is nothing cowardly about faith. <laughs> I assure you. Uh, great courage is involved in faith in God. They are, they're not, uh, not at all connected to cowardliness. And laying back and pulling back and hiding and cowering, that's, God says, I have no pleasure in that. I don't want you laying back and doing nothing. I, I don't want you quitting and giving up. And this, th this thing about, you know, uh, people quote it like it's a scripture, let go and let God. People say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, first of all, let's agree it's not a scripture. <laughs> all right? <laughs> So if it's not a scripture, you shouldn't treat it like one. Hmm? And, uh, you know, the scripture says, 1 Timothy, fight the good fight 
of faith lay hold on eternal life. Well, is there any difference between letting go and laying hold? If you're talking about letting go of your fear, letting go of your anxiety, letting go of your worry, casting all your cares over on the Lord, yes, yes, let go of that. But if you're saying sit back and just wait for God to do everything, just leave it all up to Him, you can't leave up to Him what He left up to you. That's, that's shirking your responsibility. That's actually being spiritually lazy, lazy and, and remiss. And that's what He's saying. I have no pleasure if you're just going to lay back and quit and not even try, not even make an effort. And you're going to give up. Faith does not throw up its hands and surrender. <laughs> and you'll see that more and more clearly as we go through this. In uh, the 11th chapter, he, well, let me read the rest of it. He said, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. And, and we need to affirm that and, and say that. I, I'm not of those who lay back and quit. I'm not of those who give up, accept defeat. He said, but we're of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And so he goes in verse after verse in Hebrews 11, giving examples, living examples of people, the patriarchs and those before us who walked and lived by faith and saw amazing things, miracles. And we got all the way down to verse 32. And he said, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel, and of the prophets. So he mentions six different individuals plus others. He's saying, I, I hadn't given you an exhaustive list here. I've just given you a handful. But how that faith is the same, whether it was an Enoch centuries and centuries before uh, Joseph or one of these other individuals. And, and we need to remember that it's, it's easy to uh, put people like Abraham on a pedestal. It was so long ago, you, you, you've never met him personally, so you don't know all the details of his life, but you read about him in the Bible, you see he's held up and called the friend of God and the father of faith. And, and you got to watch or you have this idea is uh, he's on a different level from me. You know, he, and just kind of concede that I'll, I'll never have faith like that. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> we got the same spirit of faith. Somebody say, I have the same spirit of faith. Same spirit of faith as who? Same spirit of faith as the apostles. Same spirit of faith as Moses, Elijah, Abraham, same spirit of faith as Jesus. Huh? Same spirit of faith as God the Creator. That's where it came from. We're certainly not saying we're developed in faith to the point He is. We're not speaking galaxies into existence yet. Let's start with paying our bills. <laughs> right? <laughs> and... Uh, you know, getting our bodies in better shape, uh, overcoming a sickness or something like that. But it works the same way. You believe in your heart. You're fully persuaded. You say with your mouth, you don't back down. You don't back off. You lay hold. And having done all to stand, you stand. Right? Can, can you see the spirit of faith is not wimpy. The spirit of faith is not a coward. The spirit of faith makes one uh, courageous and ultimately victorious. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the enemy, uh, and sadly and successfully so, has painted and portrayed the church as a bunch of weaklings. You know, you know sniveling, complaining, self-deprecating, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. And do, you know, believe nothing, know nothing, have nothing, 
do nothings. Why? Numerous reasons. Of course, he wants the church gutted. So it's not making any difference in the earth. He also wants the church pitiful so that anybody that looks us looks at us does not want to be one of us. Hmm? And the enemy tells unbelievers, oh man, if you become a believer, your life is over. Your fun is over. You can't have anything. You can't do anything. And then he says, look at them. See what I mean? <laughs> now we're laughing. But it's too true. Hmm? But it shouldn't be. I said it shouldn't be. We should be the strongest. Hallelujah. We should be the most enabled, the most empowered, the most wise. And when it comes to the things of God, the most successful. Not just material success, but life success. Victory in Christ. In... Uh, Hebrews 32, he said, uh, the time would fail me to tell, tell you about Gideon. Well, what about Gideon? Well, what happened with him? How he lived by faith? How, and, and Barak, what happened to him? Well, it, and it sums it up in, in verse 33 and 4 and, and 5. Let me just read part of it. It said, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. Through faith, they wrought righteousness. Through faith, they obtained promises. Through faith, they stop the mouths of lions. Who does that remind you of? Well, Daniel. Through faith, they quench the violence of fire. Who does that remind you of? Well, what we call the three Hebrew children thrown into the fiery furnace. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. They did all of this how? How? By faith. What, what kind of faith? What, what kind of magical stuff is he talking about? No, he's talking about the same spirit that's in every believer, every child of God. Let me read this to you from the today's English version. He said, uh, should I go on? There isn't enough time for me to speak of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through faith, they fought whole countries and won. They did what was right, and they received what God had promised. How? Through their faith. They shut the mouths of lions through their faith. They put out fierce fires. They escaped being killed. They were weak but became strong, mighty in battle, defeated the armies of foreigners. Through faith, women received dead relatives raised back to life. Let, let, let me just summarize it again in this way. Uh, in, with faith, they won battles. Can you still win battles today yes. with faith? By faith, they were able to do what was right. By faith, they were able to receive promises, the manifestation of God's promises in their life. By faith, they would shut the mouth of the devourer. Does that sound good? By faith, they put out fi fires. You ever have any fires that needed to be put out? By faith, they escaped being killed and hurt. By faith, they overcame being weak. By faith, they defeated the enemy, even death itself, and saw resurrection. Hallelujah. All of that's what? By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Do you think we're making too big of a deal out of faith around here? I don't think so. It is the answer. It is the way to victory in all these things. Go with me back to the book of Judges, and let's just take a look at one of these individuals. We've been doing this uh, all through our study, so I don't think it's any time to change now. Let's, uh, if he mentions somebody, let's go look at them. Let's learn how they did what they did by faith, because it'll work exactly that way today. It's the same kind of faith. It's the same spirit of faith. Let's look at this man called uh, Barak in uh, Judges. I believe it's the fourth chapter we'll start. Now, if we're not that familiar with Barak, let's get familiar with him. Because if, uh, to me, anybody's name, it's in Hebrews 11. You should show respect, right? <laughs> 
Well, Mr. Barak, how did you do it, man? The Bible said in Judges 4, verse 1, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Herosheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried to the Lord, for he, that Sisera, had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel." In this chapter, this 32nd verse of Hebrews 11, where these six individuals are named, several of them are here in the book of Judges. And you'll find in the book of Judges that this basically begins with um, um, Joshua's death and then what followed after that. You know, Moses led the people and then Joshua did after his death and then what happens after Joshua, Judges talks about. And you'll see that it mentions leader after leader through generations. A lot of times there's 40, 80 years between verses. (laughs) You just have to look and see what's going on. But um, uh, what's happening is the people keep forsaking God. That's the pattern is that the people forsake God, they quit serving Him, they quit believing Him, they quit trusting Him, they stop obeying Him, and they embrace the beliefs of the ungodly around them. They wind up serving these false gods, Baal and Ashtoreth, and doing abominable things. Well, what happened as we just get through reading, when they would do that, God would leave them to their own devices. And people try to blame God, but that's wrong. The worst thing that could ever happen to a person that chooses to not believe in God is to be left to themselves. Hmm? Left to do whatever you want to do and left without God's help. You see, it doesn't work to say, I don't believe in God. I don't want to know anything he has to say. I don't want to know anything about a plan of God. But then turn around and say, I want God's protection. And I want God's help. And I want God to bless me. Well, how does that work? You said you don't even believe in him. The reason I'm saying that is because this is relevant today. Same thing is happening. Same thing is going on. People are pushing God away with one hand. And on the other hand, you you see people that say in in normal, you know, so-called good times, they say they don't even believe in God. But then if problems arise, they're mad at God. Mad at God? Well, I thought you don't believe in God. (laughs) See, their spirit knows better. Even though their educated head says they don't believe in God, their heart won't agree with them. Inside them, why? Because you're spirit. And, and you're aware, whether on a level, cognizant level or not, that spiritual things are real. So what would happen is when the people really got in trouble, they'd cry out to God, the God that, you know, years ago they decided they didn't believe in. They'd cry out to him, He'd have mercy on them. He'd raise up a deliverer. (laughs) Somebody to lead them back out of the woods, (laughs) back out of the dark, into the light. And he, somebody that had some faith. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Barak was one of these individuals. Gideon is one of these people. Uh, Samson's one of these people. They're, They're all through this book champions, if you will, of faith. That, and, and it's amazing because uh, several of them were unlikely candidates for this from an outward perspective. You, if you were picking one to be a faith giant, to lead God's people to victory, you probably wouldn't have picked them. 
But God doesn't look on the outward appearance. He looks on the inside. He looks on the heart. And he knows and discerns people that even though they're not there now, they will trust him. And they will obey him. They will believe him. They will follow him all the way. And so uh, those who treasure his things, he uses and he gives them more. He's big on stewardship. If you want more faith, the big thing is to use what you got. Hmm? Walk fully in what you have, and the Lord will add to you the knowledge, the revelation, the grace, and your faith will develop and grow. Same with revelation, same with anointing. If you want more, tell me what to do, class. Use what you've got. Do you remember in some of the most dire circumstances, like the widow woman that just had a little bit of uh, oil in, in the house and they're about to come take her sons for slaves. And what does the prophet say to her when she cried out for help? What do you have in the house? What do you got? See, God's going to use what you have, even though it seems so small, if you'll give it to him, he's a multiplier. He, he can do a lot with a little. And when they're out on that hillside, and there are thousands of people hungry. And he tells the disciples, well, feed them. And they said, with what? You know, if we spend all this money, it wouldn't touch it. And what does he say? What do you have? Go and see. We need to go and see. <laughs> we need to take account of what we have. We must stop crying about what we don't know. And what we don't have. And what we can't do. And how nobody will help. And... We must stop that. We must stop imagining people owe us things. Are you all with me, friends? We must look to God and thank Him for what we have. Hallelujah. I'm breathing today. My mind's working. Is that right? I got some faith in my heart. I know somebody who can fix everything. I know somebody who can do anything. Right? Yes, so there is a way out. There is a way over. There's a way through. There are answers. But I must use what I have. I must walk in the light of what I know. So when they would leave God and forsake God, they forfeited his protection and blessing. Do you hear the language? He left them in the hands of their enemies. Well, was that his choice? No, they're the ones that left him. And so he said, well, okay, you don't want me. You can have them. In fact, in one place here, they had done it so many times until finally in desperation, they came, called out to God again. I'm talking about in the book of Judges here. And he said, well, uh, go to your new gods. God said it. <laughs> go to your new gods and get them to help you. The Lord gets weary of people never having time for Him until they're in desperation. And then as soon as they're out of desperation, they forget Him. You know, uh, sometimes called foxhole conversion. You know, <laughs> when you're under fire, oh God, oh God, get me out of here and I'll live for you. And I do. But so many people, soon as they're out of immediate danger... They forget it. They don't remember anything they prayed or they said. No, you're not, don't, you shouldn't be trying to make deals with God. You're really not in a position to. <laughs> He's got all the power. <laughs> you shouldn't be trying to make a deal. You should be submitting yourself to him and asking for his help, but not just asking and begging, but asking in faith. Believing that you receive. So the, uh, the children of Israel, the people of Israel, are in a bad way. This guy, this uh, military commander named Sisera, has uh, tens of thousands of swordsmen. And he has something that you didn't see too often these days. Iron chariots. <laughs> Everybody say iron chariots. Iron. These things apparently... Uh, were so formidable uh, of weapons in the day 
that people who normally could have a victory, if they encountered those, did not. There's historical instances of it. And I was curious myself as to, well, what's the deal with these iron chariots? And come to find out, I guess there's, you know, for the most part, people don't know. It's too long ago. They don't have complete historical records. But apparently, from what little we do have, there were metal parts or iron parts on the chariot. Maybe the wheel rims were iron. And I saw this and I thought, well, okay, that makes sense. Different ones of them had Sith blades on the wheels. So there, there are these blades extending out from the wheels that as the wheel turns, it mow people down. You come in to foot, footmen in this big chariot driven by these big massive horses running at full speed. Well, it just sliced people up on both sides of you. Just a, a de- and it, because it was plated with iron in different places, it, you couldn't just take it out with a spear or a stick or whatever. It was impervious to some uh, types of assault. So this guy had how many of these? 900. (laughs) And so for decades then, the Israelites are oppressed. They don't have the military means to get free from this. And the Bible said uh, that they were uh, mightily oppressed. Verse 3. Mightily oppressed. Um, Let me read this to you from another translation, the NIV says they were cruelly oppressed for 20 years. The Amplified says they were severely oppressed, grievously oppressed. The Dewey Rames said uh, he made life unbearable for them. It was, a, it was a bad, bad time in their lives until God put his hand on a woman named Deborah and he put his hand on a man called Barak and he raised up champions And we're going to find out he led them to victory over a seeming impossible. Even if the devil's got iron chariots, God's bigger than iron chariots. And they were all destroyed. Can you say thank you, Lord? Lord. (laughs) Well, our time's up again today. Say it out loud. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith giving glory to God. We'll see you next time in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390. 